Okay. I think we're live. You'd think this would get smoother as time goes on, but it doesn't. Uh, let's see here. Right as I go live, internet drops slightly. Hey, Anto. How you doing? <sighs> okay. Let me just uh, shuffle some pages around here. Let people kind of shuffle in. Uh, my reference maps up. Bob Ross of maps has returned. <laughs> Way too much credit. I'm nowhere near as good as Bob Ross. So, as you can see, uh, I did a lot with this map in the intervening time between last week and this week. Uh, basically, I put together i put all the labels down like and basically it's done it's done the roads the borders the labels of the settlements the labels of the countries the cartouche in the bottom left that's all been implemented so the uh so we've already got that finished so the question presented with me today see some happy little borders yes there are some happy little borders actually not so happy this is during a time of war so probably the exact opposite of happy um but yeah uh won't be able to watch much of this live but i'm 100 on board with the world building mac mapping like this we'll absolutely watch the vod later tonight oh okay trinix thanks though uh, or thanks for boosting audience. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I finished the map. So the question of today, uh, what I was originally planning on doing in the intervening, like, three hours from the end of work to the stream was to figure out what I was going to do today for the stream. Uh, problem was, I didn't get that time because work went late really late so i only i've only had like maybe uh like a half hour of spare time so i'm kind of scrambling to think of what i want to do there's a couple of different options for world building stuff i could continue to work on this project and by this project i mean this setting and uh I need to make a uh, kind of a, I guess you, you'd call it like a local map of uh, this area. Worked at a tangent, yes it did. Uh, like this area, I need a local map. So that's something I can do. So the Princeton of the Lynn. Hey, Pally. Uh, <laughs> welcome to this completely just scatterbrain stream i have had like no prep time because the work went really late uh but yeah i could uh, do princeton of the lynn i need to kind of work on that uh, and do that area map or uh another thing i need to do is make some small or make some city maps uh i need to do one for this one uh which is uh called barnet uh, and then I also need to uh, make a map of the smaller one, uh, St. Tello. Uh, both of those need to be done. So I, I've got that starting area, I presume, then. Well, I mean, could. Yeah, starting area is always important. But it's... Um, it's... You want the... You know, like, starting... I need to kind of work out if I want to just maintain the same... Uh, style uh the problem is is if i go to that scale then i need to start figuring out how i'm going to draw like trees and trees are hard <laughs> because it's an actual like 
object that needs to be uh, drawn. Uh, whereas a city map is kind of uh, it's a bit easier because you're just you're kind of just drawing a city. You have the, basically the terrain that you draw that you fill in with the city. Um, I mean, it can get fairly detailed, but if you're doing certain styles, it doesn't take that much effort to kind of get done. So I'm kind of leaning towards. Uh, so I've got that if I continue on this project. Sorry, I've been talking a lot today. I've been in a lot of meetings. Um, so I've got that. The other thing uh, that I could start working on if I've got the reference images here. Uh, leak the Victoria 3 game? No, I didn't. Uh, is this the one I'm thinking of? Nope. Yeah, the other thing I can work on is I have a, a project I need to do. Uh, I'm trying, I basically, I've said this before, I have a, we were originally going to be playing Twilight 2000 for the uh, Tuesday Crew game. Um, the issue that came up with that is that it's, hit, it's really close to home with the whole thing in Ukraine right now. So to kind of, I guess, what am I trying to say? To Victoria 3 game? Yeah, what Victoria 3 game? Um, map is looking amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but the, uh, the Twilight 2000 uh, game it hits too close to home because of the whole Ukraine thing. Uh, so as a way of getting around that, it was floated to maybe do something like make a... Uh, Explosive device planted into their spines that will detonate a remote monitoring station. <laughs> so, the uh, so somebody floated the idea of instead of using the uh, the um, Twilight Two Thousand setting, which is the real world, just an alternative history, going about it a different way and making a uh, kind of like a strange real setting. Uh, that in the sense that you're essentially making a um, a world that's different historically and everything's kind of different to the real world uh, but all the labels and kind of the pers the people groups and stuff like that are relatively similar so you know in like Strange Real which is like the Ace Combat setting you have things like Yuktabania and uh Belka, I think, um, uh, you know, the uh, Aussie Federation, things like that, which kind of like are stand ins for like NATO and the Soviets and Germany, etc. Uh, so it's a way of getting around that kind of a thing. And this wouldn't be a project that would be needed to be done quickly. So I'm wanting to take my time on it, but it's a de it'll be a detailed project, because if you're going to try and transfer the real world stuff into a you know, a made, like a constructed world, it will require a lot of, it will require a lot of work. You need a very deep, you need detailed maps. You need, you know, uh, believable population layouts, nas national borders, all kinds of stuff. It'll need to be very, it'll need to be along those lines. Uh, so what you're seeing on the map or what you're seeing on the screen right now is uh, one of a few different maps. Yeah, here we go. This is the one I was looking at. Uh, I found a, a random world map generator that uses scientific kind of principles to generate a good looking or believable looking map uh, based off parameters you input. I forgot exactly. Totally forgot what it was called, but it um, it kind of spat this out. It spat a lot of things out, but I kind of settled on this looking probably the the best out of them. Um, and the idea 
is I need to use this as a basis to then make a world map. I thought it'd be a great way of going about trying to explain like the process from beginning to end. Cause we already kind of did that with the previous like ma uh, world map that I made for uh, the setting that this Vihander game is going to be set in. Um, but that was a long time ago. And I thought maybe it would be better if I started afresh. So I've got the, I've got basically three different options of what I'm going to do uh, today. Um, one's a lot easier than the others, <laughs> but, uh, it, oops. I'm not sure what I want to do, honestly. So it's just trying to do it's a lot of internal debate right now. Uh, missionaria, if you've, uh, or missionary, uh, any statements regarding that, I think they're already public, so you can just go and read those. Um, so. I think I might do a city map. I need a style for the city map is the problem. City maps Hard to do if you don't have a style that you're basing it off of. Hey, Red. Uh, so did I... S I think I remember when I saw. I just don't remember if I liked it or not on Twitter. If I did, then I can use that as a basis. But I doubt I did. Like following them. Uh... I think so. Nope, doesn't look like it. Okay, so I could I could make it work. Let's try the uh, let's try a city map today. Okay, so the question is, we're going to do this. So we need a base layer with a color. Uh, let's just go ahead and get... Like a slight blue tinted gray. Oh no, we just need like an actual gray. And for some happy little houses. Yeah, happy little houses. That's a bit too gray. See that working? That looks good. Missed the last two streams due to visiting my family for Easter. What did I miss? Uh, well, for this these streams, I've already finished uh, this map. So that's already done. Uh, the uh, kind of regional map that we're uh, we were working on before. Uh, and as for the other streams I've been doing, uh, those were, uh, hobby streams. So I just did, I just painted models and stuff. So, uh, I was at my, uh, hobby desk. So not nothing I can really show off that you missed. Um, 
one thing I will need to do. What are we mapping today, Banjo Magnus? Uh, there's a see. I you you missed my whole spiel at the beginning, Magnus. Um, I have a lot of options because I finished this map. Like this is done, uh, essentially. Like I put all the labels in. I put in the cartouche and filled that out. Like it's all done. Um, what I needed to be. So now I'm presented with the option of I could make the regional map, like the starting area map, which would be in like this area uh, in detail, like this, uh, uh, the Princeton of the Lynn, which is uh, where the game will start. Uh, I could do the city maps for St. Tillo or the uh, city of Barnet. Um, so city maps with that. Uh, both are interesting. They present their own challenges because a regional map, uh, it's going to be a closer scale, so it'll involve me more. It'll draw. It'll involve me doing more hand drawing things, which I don't know if I've got it in me to do that today. I've already had a hard day. I don't need to embarrass myself for an hour <laughs> drawing, like trying to figure out how I'm going to draw trees on a map. Um, city maps are easier. Because it's, I'm basically just going to be drawing out blocks and uh, the like, so they're not as detailed. Um, so I've got that. And then the other thing that was an option was to start a whole new project where I need to start from the ground up using kind of this as a kind of template to make a world map because... Eventually, I do want to play Twilight 2000, but the problem is Twilight 2000 is set in uh, central Poland during a uh, alternative history World War III that went hot, which is a problem because of the current things in Ukraine, so it's uh, you don't really want to do that. Um, so the idea was floated to make a different a uh, world to set it in but with the same labels kind of like ace combat does so you know ace combat has the strange real world which is like a different earth um was kind of doing a similar thing but for twilight 2000 so i used a couple of random kind of map mapping generator systems to kind of output this as a guide uh and i could use this as a basis to make a world map so those are kind of the three this one's the most interesting but also kind of the most uh, open-ended. Uh, the other one that I was thinking about doing was the city map. But the problem with the city map is I don't really have a template. I don't I don't have a style like in my head that I want to go for right now. Uh, I had one, but I didn't save any, the example image I had, uh, which makes this infinitely harder. Uh, because if you don't have an example image, uh, as for me, I, I don't have like a guide to go on. So yeah, it's kind of, it's one of those things. I, I don't think I saved it because yeah, no, this is going back before the whole thing in Ukraine on my Twitter favorites. So it's definitely, definitely well far back. I, I just, I probably spotted it, but then immediately lost it. So oh, what are you going to do? Right. What are you going to do? So don't think I mm, no wouldn't be them wouldn't be them just scrolling through my, my Twitter followers or Twitter follows to see if I followed them because I know somebody made a fairly decent map but that I was going to kind of use as a basis but yeah it doesn't look like I've got them here so oh well hey Red Moogle uh, so you know go ahead and this out let's do a uh uh what is my world map uh dimensions on my other project here let's see let's go these then what is the six thousand by four thousand got that Eight K four K All right. Uh 
Hello, component cast. Okay, so if we're going to do that, then let's get a decent world map kind of color here. Actually, let me get an example map of the strange real setting, see if I can actually... Maybe they've got a decent setup I can kind of blatantly copy. Got a few. I know this is riveting for all of you who are watching. Save those. These are spelt correctly. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah, you're not the component cast. <laughs> okay, here we go. Use these kind of a basis. Uh, that directly. That's a very large map. This here transform. Get that kind of manageable. You just, but I'll never turn down an opportunity to see somebody photo edit photo editing workflow. <laughs> it's not really photo editing though. It's more just um. Yeah, I find it easier to have a guide for like mapping style. Oh, that was what that is. Oh, what am I? I'm a freaking idiot. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, import that. That was a different tab. I'm an idiot. Uh, uh should just be able to paste that in there. Yes. Cool. The other thing is, is that this is um, this is not a photo editing program. Uh, Clip Studio Paint is distinctly not a photo editing program, and <laughs> it has very limited functionality for that. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so we can use this kind of as a guide for color matching at least. Oh. Either that or I'd use something from like the Cold War, like a Cold War era world map, but eh. If we're going to do something based around, you know, the strange real kind of setting, might as well go the full hog, right? Um, so we got that one. That was number one. Is there any difference between number one and number two? Right, that one's shaded. That was the thing. Cool. Uh, so one we'll just bring that in as an example probably should have done that initially okay should Almost be able to get it all in there, yeah. Pretty close. Doesn't need to be exact. 
very limited functionality. <laughs> uh, uh, and to have the Tuesday crew and or their friends streaming them whatever they are. <laughs> so low. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this down in terms of capacity. Can hide that. And then let's see, what do we got here? It's a pretty nice color for what we need. Uh, let's get the eye jacker there. I need to stop using my mouse. <laughs> Okay, I drop that. Let's get fill going. Yeah, I can see that. That's a pretty nice ocean color. <laughs> so we got that. And now, what do we got for land color? Looks pretty uniform. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. We'll have to come up with our own symbol set. That shouldn't be that bad. Uh, and instead of doing that first, I need to remember my own, uh, my own system. We need a sketch layer. And then we need a pretty sharp pen just want to have a straight black and white there and now it's time to kind of figure out landforms so i'm gonna try i guess i'm gonna try and be informative i think is the word uh <laughs> for uh this stream uh, so we're going to try and, uh, I'm going to try and explain why things are the way they are when it comes to cartography and maps and kind of land form, like formations and stuff like that. I've done this before. Uh, so I have at least some expertise uh, and by expertise, I mean, you know, I, I call it that, um, for, by the way, for reference, if. I was doing this to like, if I was doing this to be super accurate, I wanted to be super scientific about this. I wanted it to be really, what is the word? I wanted it to be very scalable and uh, have a lot of depth to the map, like the individual map. I'd probably not do this in a raster-based program. A raster-based program is a program that uses pixels uh, in, uh, as opposed to a vector-based program, which is what I would probably want for this. I'd want to use some sort of uh, vector-based drawing or editing program, so something like Affinity Designer or... Um, what is the Adobe one? Ado is, it a, is it Adobe Designer? or No, it... Adobe Illustrator. It'd be like a Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator. Uh, just fiddling around on Photoshop myself, trying to make something for my D&D campaign. Some charcoal sketches. Ugh. God, I can't draw to save my life, so I, I can't sketch or anything. Um, but yeah, you'd want to... If you want this to have like a lot of depth and it to be super crisp, uh, which would be something you'd have if you were putting this on like a website to have like a very in-depth scale. Uh, if you were going to put this on like a Google, if you're going to make this like a module for like Google Maps, the program, uh, which is the thing some people do, uh, you'd want to do it in like Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator because those are vector-based programs, which means they have infinite detail. They, they, they use mathematics to kind of figure out where the lines are drawn instead of just using pixels. So uh, there's never really a pixelation effect that happens with them. Uh, except very, very small, but you never get to that far. Uh, I'm not going to do that since uh, I, one, Affinity Designer doesn't have uh, the workflow that I like for map making, and Adobe Illustrator scares me. So I'm not going to go ahead and use that. So, uh, so we're just going to use Drawing Program Clip Studio Paint for this. <sighs> Okay. 
this going. And the question is, how are we going to draw this? Just trying to look at the map. I definitely need to turn off the auto save feature here. So we'll go ahead and switch off auto save. Oh, uh, it's here somewhere, isn't it? Uh, that is going to annoy me so much. Screw it, never mind. Uh, so, when it comes to drawing a world map and you're trying to be scientific about it without using fant fantastical elements, the first thing you need to kind of figure out is what makes, especially with a random map like what we have right here, this is probably a fractal based mapping uh like software that outputted this uh which means it probably hasn't taken into account things like like tectonics or most things actually uh so you kind of have to figure out what you want to keep what you don't want to keep uh i like to take pieces from uh, a map of earth and rotate and resize them get some fantastic looking coast and realistic island distribution it's a way of doing it actually like that is a a viable way trinix of uh, making like a realistic looking map especially with coasts because coasts are hard to do if you're like it, it's very hard to make a coast look natural because it has an inherent non uh it has an inherent randomness to it that the human hand is very it has a very hard time like doing we humans are bad at being random we always try and form patterns so it's hard to kind of get away from that uh non-symmetry things like that are difficult for most people to kind of uh, to get uh when it, when it comes to mapping um, so what I think I, I definitely want to keep this like little small side, uh, continent here. So we're going to try and like get a land form kind of somewhat close. Don't need to be exact. You can always edit it. This is just a sketch layer. Uh, coasts are a huge pain in the ass. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. They are so hard. Like, it, it's... It take You gotta kind of... It's hard to explain. Once you get the hang of it, it's not bad. But it's it's hard to get the hang of it is the problem. Because there's no real guide on how to do it well. You just kind of have to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Uh, I guess the best way of describing it is, like, the coast doesn't need to be just squiggly. There needs to be cutouts and cut-ins. And, uh, you know, it does. It, there are bits of coast that are straight and just random, like, things like that that really come into it. And the closer you get in to into the coast, like the smaller scale the map is, the harder the coast actually gets, uh, kind of inversely, uh, I've found.
There's some noisy brushes in GIMP that help a lot for coastal erosion. Just brush along the edge and with the eraser tool and it bites some realistic looking chunks out of it. Yeah, there are a lot of technological solutions to it. Definitely. That's like, that's always there. Rival says, hi, he'd watch himself, but currently replacing some hardware, so PC is in pieces. Rival is suffering <laughs> withdrawals. <laughs> yeah, I heard he's replacing the hard drive. That's why it's almost impossible to accurately measure a coastline. The closer you get in, the more chaotic it gets. Actually, that is, yes, that is true. Um, the, uh, uh, oh, I, I forget the exact measurements, but uh, like the coastline, there is technically an infinite amount of coastline. The further you go, the the longer it, the, the more detailed you get you get the longer it, the coastline will get into infinity because at a certain point there's just too much detail i forget which one the example it was but it was like it went from like you just measure the the uk's coastline in just a form of triangles and then it gets it gets progressively smaller triangles and the coastline goes from like a couple thousand miles to like tens of thousands of miles it's it, it's crazy it, it's something you don't think about but it's totally makes sense <laughs> hey mordred i would have said hey but your your fact got me on a tangent so i had to <laughs> i had to go along with it It was a good tangent. <laughs> Thank you, Mordred. <laughs> Don't get me on mapping facts. You won't stop. I, I can't stop. <laughs> Florida's best state. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Cartography with Roach coming up, <laughs> coming up at 11. <laughs> There has there have been there has been talk of doing uh, a cartography show for the component cast stuff. And I've I've offered my services. It's something that I'm passionate about, even though I have very little actual skill in it. That is a, yeah, that eraser has got to be switched up hard. Go back down to 20, let's go down to 15. Oh. Oh. Let's 
Gotta double check my music here. Oh, hey, we already finished the March of Eagle soundtrack. Ha, oh, such a good soundtrack. <laughs> that 40 minutes flew by. <laughs> uh, what other soundtrack is good to put in here? You know what? Magicka 2. Let's do that. I always like that game. I'd be up for that cartography stream, doing my own world building streams too. It took several months to build the geography. Now onto the history. Yeah, that's... It's, it's kind of a never-ending process because depending, you just gotta... At a certain point, you just gotta tell yourself how far you're gonna go when it comes to uh, world building because you could go on forever. Wait, is there music? <laughs> Yeah, the, there, there's a little bit. I mean, it's not a lot. If I don't talk, I'm very loud, so I kind of drown it out. <laughs> I'm loud and obnoxious. Can't hear music? Should be able to. Hold on, let me adjust it slightly. Okay. I just gotta bring down my internal volume there. Basically non-existent. Let me get the... Can't hear it over you for. Should be better now. Crank it up a notch <laughs> with a spice weasel. actually have to play Magicka at some point. I've messed around with it, but I never actually finished the campaign. Uh, uh, if Opa to admit that I like to generate world maps in Dwarf Fortress and support them into Paint Tool, the map generation there is insane for an ASCII game. A lot of fine detail, yeah, but it simulates a ton of natural processes to crank out some... No, actually, I mean, that's totally valid. There are a lot of there are a lot of ways of going about uh like making kind of a, a realistic looking map that you could use that and, and all of them are valid none of them are bad or anything like don't feel bad about using you know dwarf fortress because that is that's valid because you still have to have some sort of creative control over it because it's just it's porting over you know, characters. So at some point you still have to put some effort into it. But even if you don't, like uh, uh, Midge, uh, like uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure the better part of Midge's like uh, Elendor map 
is uh, is from a random world map generator. I forget what it's called, uh, but it's, I mean, it's fairly detailed. You can also go in and edit. So I think he's also edited a lot of stuff, too. Um, yeah, there's yeah, that's that's Mitch. <laughs> yeah, the SKR's map generator. Um, there's that. Um, I mean, if we're going to be talking about it, this is a tangent, but, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, another one that's also valid that I would recommend uh, is Fractal Terrains 3. So I'm bringing it up on the map on the screen right now. This just this just generated. I didn't touch it. Just the pre-selected uh, things just made this map. This program is amazing. You can export in so many different formats and it has full control over like biomes. Cha you can you can go in and physically edit all of these uh, altitudes and everything. Uh, so like, I mean, this this program is amazing. I totally recommend it if you're like, cause you can buy it uh, from, it's Pro Fantasy. It's a Pro Fantasy software. They have a whole suite of mapping software uh like programs from this a world map uh to like cartography uh was it cartographer uh oh god what is it uh campaign cartographer three uh and that's got a whole bunch of subdomains of like dungeon cartographer three uh cosmographer which is like a space-based one just it kind of just runs the gambit uh, I know Ben's somewhat familiar, at least with Campaign Cartographer, because he made at least one of his world maps on it. Um, but yeah, like, if you're looking for, like, just something that you can really, like, get your, like, just go, like, elbow deep into and just and just be able to, like, mess around with everything, I totally recommend Fractal Terrains 3. Uh, technically, Fractal Terrains 3 Plus. Uh... And uh, you can really do so much with it. Uh, for example, by the way, I think I might still have this. Uh, again, we're going off on a tangent here, but this is all about making maps. Uh, let me just check here. Uh, like with Fractal Terrains, uh, with Fractal Terrains 3, I at one point... Oh, where is it at? It's not there. Export. Oh, this is going to annoy me now. Uh... I gotta try and find this because now it's super annoying me that I don't know where it is off the top of my head. Uh... Oh, I don't want to do. Oh, this is a big one. Um. Uh... Let's see. Let I'll let that kind of work in the background. Tangents are what we're here for. <laughs> But yeah, Trinix, if you have a chance, uh, if you want something that just makes like uh, the one that Midge linked to you makes like a, a regional map, I would say, or like a continental map. But if you want a world map, Fractal Terrains 3, totally recommend it. You can you can make good actual like maps of like worlds in there, but you can also use a lot of its functionalities. I'm trying to find it. I really am. It's going to annoy that shit out of me until I do. Uh... Oh, where are you? But, uh, yeah, there's that. I'm just going to exit out of that. Maybe that'll help the, uh, the Windows, <laughs> Windows uh, storage search go quicker because I clicked that button to try and find the file I was looking at. So that's going to be doing that for the next All of Eternity.
Trinix, you're. I feel that. I feel that on, a, on in my soul. I This is annoying me so much because I know I, I know it's somewhere. I know it, I know this damn thing is somewhere. And now I'm just fixated on it because I can't find the damn thing. Got it. <laughs> uh. I like tangents and tirades it would be a top t uh I feel like tangents and tirades would be a top tier D&D &D podcast component. <laughs> it definitely could. Uh okay, here was what I was going to say. With Fractal Terrains 3, if you know how to use it and you get familiar with it, you can start doing things like uh like this. I was able to make a uh I was able to make this actual like globe it's for a uh it was for a a lore writing challenge for a tau for my tau army for 40k so i made a i made a sep world uh with that program so this is like fully made by me like the the landforms are mostly generated but then touched up and then i did all the uh biomes exported it and then i was able to make it into a a rotating globe like uh gif uh for i had like a it was a write-up and i made like a pdf write-up of of like the the sep world and its history uh so like with that you can make this uh i also made a static image uh which is this this was also both of those globes were made in fractal terrains 3 and then i used a little bit of gimp photo editing magic to make a uh a full uh uh picture out of that i've done a couple of these for reference So yeah, definitely. Full-throated endorsement of Fractal Terrains 3. You can do a lot with it. Okay, now we can get back <laughs> to, the, to the subject matter at hand. <laughs> <laughs> podcast what's podcast that component cast <laughs>
Okay, just gonna get all the islands done. Actually, a good soundtrack. I, I haven't listened to the Magicka soundtrack for a while. Jauntily upbeat for a game with such gore. <laughs> if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure you can just blow up people with magic in that game, so... check without the overlay it's not looking half bad so far I think, the, actually, now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the only f thing of Magicka that I played, like, most of was the... Didn't they do, like, a Magicka Vietnam uh, uh, DLC or some, like, crazy thing like that? I seem to recall the Magicka devs were probably on something. <laughs> With just how wacky some of the ideas they had in that game were. Ooh. 
Uh, yeah, we're just getting all the smaller landforms done first. Before we decide on the larger ones. Very true, very true, Red, Zared. I have to remember now that we have two Reds in the chat. I'm thinking I'm going to have to add a, like a continent or something over here. Uh, uh, well, it can't be too close to Earth, so maybe not. Yeah, I guess I could just say Eric. That's cool. That's, that's actually probably better. I think we'll go with that. <laughs> ah, Trinix. <laughs> so I got like two factor authentication on my YouTube account. I I make sure nobody can get on that but me. It doesn't stay logged on anywhere that I'm not using all the time. Hopefully the music's now, like, audible. It's definitely worth being audible, because this is an enjoyable soundtrack. If all my D&D games weren't live-streamed, I'd probably use this as some sort of background audio for games at home. <laughs> okay. 
just got get through kind of mapping out all these land uh, or all the uh, shorelines like this internal sea. We'll make it just as big though. Not all the islands, we need to get all these done. kind of back out to full screen and then kind of look at what you've done so the way you can kind of kind of see how things are going if things look a little off it's good to catch it early
Hope everybody's having a good day, by the way. All things considered. Uh, for a few individuals, I know. I'm doing okay. Uh Red, I'm I'm doing all right, you know. Work was a little uh hectic today. I only had about a half hour even though this stream it would normally start up. I was 2:30. I get off at 11, so that's you know, three and a half hours uh technically uh after I would normally stop work uh i only had a half hour of actual time between finishing stuff for the day and get in the stream going live so uh yeah that probably says a lot uh it's just a lot of things needed to get done today that uh, uh took a while so yeah But hopefully things will start uh, getting a little uh, less hectic pretty soon. I can only hope. It's not looking half bad so far from kind of a zoomed out perspective. Let me rest my thumb here.
Now you saw how I kind of evened out my randomness up on the like Arctic area there. That's because this is, uh, I believe I had this projected in a, a the projection ex uh, makes the uh, extreme north and south of the map much more distorted than kind of the center part of the map. So uh, you have to keep that in mind if you're going to try ever try and put this on like a globe or something uh, is to kind of build in a little bit of distortion so that it makes sense going kind of around uh, a globe uh, as best as you can. Catchy little tune. Get all these little inland seas, uh, all right, inland seas or kind of large lakes mapped out. And I think it's going to be more of a, uh, a large inlet than an actual lake, as it looks like in this. example image that I'm using. get this kind of main continent. I just about had a heart attack because I hadn't really thought about uh, which layer I was drawing on uh, for a long time and I thought I accidentally was on the wrong layer. Uh, so... Yeah, that, uh, 
That would have sucked. <laughs> Luckily, I, I, <laughs> I thought about that an hour ago. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it now. Uh, whoa, that was that was a change of pace for that song. Oi, Vicky Hobraskvik. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> what song is this? Okay. If they start having dialogue, I. <laughs> I have to stop listening to the soundtrack. <laughs> uh, actually, let's see. Got to be something else in here. Oh, I know. I'm aware of what some people are playing in the background or playing while I'm in the background so this will just screw with them the soundtrack You know, I was debating before to, uh, before it got really late today of setting up and just going right ahead and doing a, uh, a stream on Twitch. Uh, I didn't have enough time to set everything up, though, so I just decided to go with the pre-setup I already had for YouTube. Because I probably won't be able to stream uh, on Wednesday next week, because I'll have jury duty. So... If all goes to plan, this will be the last mapping stream on YouTube for a while as I try out uh, Twitch uh, come the start of May. I should probably keep my OBS up so I can keep track of everything. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that, since obviously the YouTube notifications won't work. Not that I 
expect a lot of people are coming to these streams because of YouTube notifications. It's probably from my like incessant uh, tweets and uh, pushing this the links to the streams on various Discord servers. Uh, actual jury, do, I, I, it's, it's a county, like it, it's, it's to the county courthouse. I just have a set, I have three days listed for duty. So I'm assuming I'm, I'm not actually on for a trial or anything. I think we're just the backup jurors or, or something like that. It lists my jury duty as quite literally three days, the last three days of next week, which are the last three weekdays in the month. So that's what I'm assuming. It does mean I need to look into, I need to get a dress shirt that doesn't have French cuffs <laughs> so I can, I can wear it to jury duty. Because all of my dress shirts that I have now have French cuffs because of the, uh, uh, Trakoka Knights uh, campaign. <laughs> and I don't think that's proper attire. I also realized, and I know this doesn't have anything to do with mapping, but right now I'm really just tracing and trying and uh, making a, a coastline, which is kind of autopilot for me at this point. Um, I realize because I'm picking up a couple of things for upcoming role playing games that I'm taking part in. God, I need to <laughs> I need to get like large, a larger closet, a better long term, like storage solution for uh old clothes uh or stop wearing costumes because <laughs> i've got it's it's starting it's gonna start piling up <laughs> i've got all the stuff from trakoga knights which is like two decent like like i've got like dress pants a couple of dress shirts uh with french cuffs uh I've got uh, two vests. I've got three actual, like not Trilby's fedoras uh, in different colors uh, from Trakoga Knights. I've got uh, a full Mech Warrior in, uh, Steiner infantry uh, costume uniform thing that I made for Halloween slash uh, the Halloween stream this year on component cast. So, but I haven't worn since, cause why would I? Uh, so I've got that. I'm currently gathering up things for Rivals uh, Elite Dangerous uh, campaign that we're gonna start uh, in two weeks. Um, quite literally, I've ordered a custom made hat uh, that I, I spent too, I spent too much on, I spent enough on that I don't want to say how much I spent. <laughs> it, was that, it was, it was, it was that much. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah. So if things continue on like they are, I'm going to have just a closet full of like one-offs. Not even just the hat for that really dangerous thing. I've got a bomber jacket in the like coming in the mail. <laughs> Luckily, I don't have to buy the uh, uh, aviators because I actually have a prescription pair of aviators that I, I wear normally.
Think you just like costumes? I do just like costumes. Honest, I do. I, I, I'm just saying is I, <laughs> is if I keep going for for wearing costumes, I'm gonna run out of room. <laughs> Okay. Background. Doesn't look half bad. It's also not to mention the uh, full British infantry uh, uh, uniform, like uh, in DPM, like late 1990s, uh, late 1990s DPM, like uh, British infantry uniform that I have, including an actual ballistic helmet, like an actual Mark VI uh, ballistic, Kev <laughs> ballistic Kevlar helmet, uh, or ballistic nylon helmet uh, that uh, I picked up for that that's not being used right now. So that's just kind of sitting in the closet. <laughs> Including a full load-bearing vest system. I put a lot... I put way too much money into these costumes. costumes like I used to like I did reenactments for a while I've done LARP you know I've done all that kind of stuff and I've enjoyed it it's been a while since I've done a LARP but uh, long enough that I don't think any of my stuff like is still around I think I I threw out most of it after a time or I've grown out of it Though in relation to the map that we finished previous in the previous weeks, I will have new fantasy based garb uh, very soon in relation to that campaign. Got an old, uh, got an old, uh, surplus army jacket. Like, uh, like one of those old, uh, oh, what do they call them? What is it? M, M65s or whatever? Uh, M M68s. Uh, from, uh, when my uncle was in the army. So, I've got one of those. Used to have a lot more, but I, Again, outgrew it or kind of wore it out. I guess I, I did repurpose one of my costume things for everyday wear because I've got a uh, a flat cap I picked up for the Tacoga Knights uh, campaign uh, to wear, and I actually wear that outside now, like when I go shopping. It's just uh, I'll wear a flat cap because. Yeah, I have the soul of a 90-year-old in me, I guess.
All right, I think that's it for the coastline. Or at least uh, the coastline as it is on the original map with a little bit of modification. question is, are we going to add to it in any way? It's where a little bit of artistic license, but also a little knowledge on plate tectonics and how like continents form kind of comes into play. But also what I need out of the map. Because if we put an overlay of like earth on here, which do I even have like a one of my maps that has like an overlay of earth? Do. Let me just control C with that. Control V there. Okay. So essentially what we've got, I don't know if this comes across on the stream that well, so essentially what we've got here is a 
major landmass. It's about the size of the entire Atlantic Ocean with bits of... Eh, that's, I mean, land-wise, it's pretty close to Earth. Definitely has some... Very low... It's very all and kind of one, though. It's not as spread out. We want like a Britain analog or like a, yeah, British Isle analog. There's not really one. No, that's kind of all together. I guess that's fairly close. near the equator. Okay. Do I have just a copy of a grid? I do. Instead of going ahead and making a new one. Got that. So now we have, so we've got the grid. Welcome back, Midge. Uh, so we got the grid there. I think it looks good. I'm just kind of step, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm doing the thing where a lot of artists will step back and I'm trying to see if there's anything I spot that looks out of the ordinary, if I need to add any more for a map. So you could have more landforms kind of added, more like a like minor continents, that kind of stuff. But I'm not seeing any because there's that big major continent there, side like island continent. Big kind of southern quasi one here. Very vertical instead of horizontal, which is not like Earth. Earth is very kind of has a lot of horizon uh, horizontalness to at least like the Eurasian continent. Whereas this one's just kind of vertical in a sense. Let's put down a, let's get the colors of the continents down at least. So let's get our eyedropper out again. Just want to check like in terms of What's water and what's land? Uh, I can help with that, Midge. Uh, so let me get this going here. Uh, I think that works. That should probably be more visible. I'm trying to uh, get the layers together here. I just need to uh, get a color drop. And like an off beige color layer. So. 
Now I see what I'm looking at. <laughs> okay, and then the question is, forget, is this? Well, we've got to convert selected area. Actually, isn't there a way to mask this instead of just doing a bucket select? Uh, uh, okay, this is me getting into... that oh I'm forgetting how masking works <laughs> God, I'm an idiot uh, layer so we've masked that I'm gonna have to that's always it's always been a mind fuck for me uh works Hold on while I read a tutorial. <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay, never mind. All right, so hold on. Uh, mask, okay. So we've got... So let me just see here. Matt, uh, so I just to hide image. This function, necessary parts such as overlapping lines can be hidden, making the scene even easier. So I'm now reading how masking works because that might make this a lot easier. Uh, Okay. Okay, that's needs to be done. We need to select invert selected. Ask outside selection. God damn it. 
Nope, don't think I can do this. So I'm just going to have to do it manually. Ah, damn. <laughs> that was a waste of 10 minutes. <laughs> or however long that took. Hey, Lambert. Just going to... Get all these little islands because they're going to be annoying. See, this is the problem with the method I use for this is uh, it's always going to be little bits that are missed when you're bucket filling. Honestly, better to not just have the uh, transparency layer underneath. It's a lot easier to spot. Okay, got those, got those. Right up here, we're missing some. Okay, just double check I got those. Ah, there's one. I think that's all of them. I think that's all the little islands, so deselect take out that there we can keep that layer and then uh, put on the water layer wish incarnate would uh, let you import images as a base layer so I can copy coastlines from another map yeah I never used that program Lambert so I, I don't know I don't have any context very loud uh, uplifting section here I'm gonna bring that down so I can hear myself think Yeah, I'm just trying now. I'm, now I got all that filled in. I gotta just think: Do I want to go ahead and add any more landforms to this map?
I mean, it's about the same as Earth. It's about that's about 70% water. It's just distributed much differently. I'd have to think on this when I have uh, a bit more time. Check. bit of coloring got out of there. Uh, best way to decide is to think how plate tectonics are. I already do. Like, all, everything makes sense plate tectonics wise. It's more just you also have to figure out if what you want from the map and seeing if this kind of still works for that. Uh, because you can have a totally scientifically based world map, but it'll still suck if it doesn't have what you need for whatever you're going to use it for. So. Okay. I guess at that point, I guess at this point now, it's more just I've got to uh, work out borders and labels. But because it's so early in development, I might just have to save that for another time. I might have to think on that and maybe edit this as well. Add some more. Add some more or edit something. So I've already modified it from the base layer that it originally was. A bit more islands. Some of the coastlines are a little bit more random. I mean, when comparing it to Earth, it definitely has everything you need. It's scale-wise, it's it's Earth scale, so I mean there's plenty of room for everything to happen. He's got a sea here about the size of the Black Sea. It's no Mediterranean analog, but oh well. Yeah, that could work. So I'm just going to make sure to save that. Call that world map, maybe. Something there. Okay, and now we go back to... Not that. We go back to working on the new upcoming campaign map stuff. Because I need to really start finishing up on this, so... I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a map of the city of Barnet. Barnet sits along two, three, sits along a river. I think we're going to model as a wider swath kind of through here. Winter Swath with a border effect, making a black, just a single pixel. Just want to double check Barnet on, yeah, there's two rivers there, so. So 
maybe we go almost had it perfect okay starting off pretty well god problem is, is i don't have a i don't have a guide i don't have any i don't have a style i'm really copying here i'm kind of coming up with i'm coming up with it as i go along for like a black and white city map Just go ahead and see if I can find something here from my normal sources. Uh, my normal sources. See you, Lambert. I don't just want to copy like a random generator one, but I do need kind of like a, a little bit of a style guide. Always helpful. I had one on Twitter, but it's just not, it's just not, I don't, I did not save it, but I did not favorite it, unfortunately, so, darn. So the question is, how do I want to depict the city of Barnet? Well, let's put down the, let's make this a, a draft layer. And let's just kind of do some doodling, see what I like. If I remember right, so it's right on the confluence. It should be mostly on the southern shore of uh pretty sure this is the gin or the gint river so it's on the southern side shouldn't have much presence on that side but it'll have some uh, so maybe there'd be like some sort of uh ooh, that needs to Back to a black pen right there. Some sort of maybe wall there. Definitely like maybe like a wall that goes along here. Kind of those two areas. This is thick enough that maybe it doesn't need anything on this side. Except maybe like a small settlement there. City extends maybe out to here. Just like a large kind of city. Nah. Let's make that maybe. bit closer to the walls right around there a couple of small settlements kind of along here and here roadway 
All right, the final episode of TN is re-uploading to YouTube backend. I'm going to schedule the entire series tomorrow. Hey, that's nice. Roadway coming through here, in there. Roadway coming through here. Massive bridge there, connecting those two up. Smaller river road. road that ends right there be a ferry going across that check my reference again yeah that kind of makes sense and smaller roads see like secondary roads will be coming in from across be a large city. I can see that kind of working. So I guess we got to get the roadways down. If we're going to do that, then. Go ahead. get kind of a no oh, not having a style guide for this is really sucking right now and this is what happens when you uh When you don't, uh, have a lot of prep time before, <laughs> before you start streaming. I only had about a half hour, so trying to backtrack my way wherever the hell I found that map that gave me the inspiration for this one. Because it was a black and white map, but it was very grounded, uh, very realistic looking kind of city layout. But I really like the way that they used kind of a, a, a monochromatic color palette. Because they used just various shades of grays with different kind of thicknesses of, of like black edges and stuff to kind of denote different um, different features. Was it something that the component cast retweeted out? Somebody relate, somebody that was kind of a part of that, maybe? That's the thing that's going to annoy the crap out of me. I need to try and find it. Hey, K-Dog. Doing fine, kind of struggling to trying to find a, uh, kind of struggling to find inspiration for a map I'm working on. I originally had inspiration, but then, uh, I've lost the, the thing that inspired me. So yeah, that's what's happening with me. Uh, and it's a symptom of me not having enough time to prep before I went live today. looking through recent tweets and retweets of people I follow because that would have been the only reason that I I would have seen it would have been a retweet or a tweet and it's annoying the crap out of me because I don't really have anywhere else to go with this because I'm just kind of half remembering it 
And I'm very bad about coming up with my own color palettes. Something it's my it's an issue I've had for a long time actually. Wait, I think I remember. Uh it's uh I think I remember it was World Building Magazine. It was in one of theirs. Yes. Whew. Saved it. <laughs> this was what I had. This was what this is. You can see why I kind of need a style guide because like this is totally different in tone. It's a lot more black than white. Uh, it's a lot darker, uh, but this is what I'm, I'm going to try and go with. So we'll actually kind of delete these because they're not what I was looking for. Okay, and then we have the bear layer that we're just going to re do there. Okay. And then the water layer. We need that. It's always fun to forget a thing, then later be like, there's that thing. Yeah, it always is. Uh, so here's how we're going to do this. Because of the way this kind of works, it's carved out like the land is carved out from the water. So we kind of need to work backwards. We need to form the land. We need to we need to kind of carve the water from the background. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give this border effect of a black make that a two then instead of drawing we're actually going to use the eraser tool we're gonna make a hard eraser and we're gonna make that a eraser. And we're gonna make that a uh, a straight 100, I think, works. We're going to make that a 100. So, like before, we're just going to... This one kind of comes in. A little bit more vertical. Yeah, that's fairly good.
There we go. That works. Okay. Next thing we kind of need to do is kind of figure out how we're going to do the city walls. Though I can tell you guys, I'm starting to flag a little bit when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, I, I woke up at one this morning and it's now four, uh, it's almost five o'clock uh, in the afternoon. And when I mean by one, I meant 1 a.m. So I'm fairly tired. I haven't really had a lot of time not working today. Uh, so while this is only about a two hour stream, I think I do kind of have to I think I do kind of have to go because even this, uh, even this tea is not really keeping my eyes open right now. So a bit of a shorter stream. And there's not going to be one next Wednesday, uh, as I'll be at, uh, jury duty. But, uh, I'll be doing my first Twitch stream of this the Wednesday after that, the first Wednesday of May. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I will have my, uh, I will try and put that in all of my social media spaces. So if you don't follow me on those spaces, do so. And uh, you'll get a heads up on that. But uh, yeah, I think I've got, I think I just got to go. I'm, I'm starting to, yeah, I'm starting to have a bit of trouble kind of keeping track of things. So I'm just going to save uh that and i will bid you all adieu have a good day uh a good day night whatever and uh i'll see you next time bye <laughs>